So this live stream is about this device here, the Hollyland Mars 400S video link. And um, so what this is, it's a video sender and a video receiver, works using the uh, same frequencies as five gigahertz Wi-Fi. And you can send the signal from the transmitter, obviously, to the receiver. It has both HDMI and HDSDI connections, so it works for both SD, uh, for HDSDI in and out, uh, in, and then HDMI in as well. And then on the receiver, you have both HDMI and SDI out. So you can actually get two outputs from the receiver. So you can send from the transmitter to the receiver, but as well as that, you can also connect with a Android phone or an Apple device uh, at the same time. So you can transmit from one transmitter to two of these receivers simultaneously, or you can transmit from one transmitter to one of the Hollyland Mars 400 receivers and up to four other devices such as Android phones or uh, iPads and things like that. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. I haven't had the best of success with Android with this device. Um, first thing you need to consider is your device, whether that's an Apple device or an Android device, the Wi-Fi on that device must be capable of working in the five gigahertz band. And not all of them are. It's actually quite surprising how many can't. Um, and you need to use the five gigahertz band to get the, the quality of the video link that we have. Um, also, with the Android devices, it doesn't the, the, the app that currently exists doesn't run on every Android device, and it would seem it won't run on mine, so I haven't been able to use it. Now, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people that I know that have this that have Apple devices, and they tell me it works great. So I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to buy myself a used iPad to work with this. And that's probably something I would have done anyway, because I don't want to go on a shoot and hand over my phone uh, or my personal device to PAs and runners and whoever who might drop it um, uh, and break it. So I would have done this anyways to actually get a dedicated device to view the signal. So I'm going to get um, probably an iPad mini or something like that. To, to do that. And yeah, a, a secondhand iPad these days is not a particularly expensive item. Um, anyway, coming so coming back to this and what it does do. So one of the big things with a device like this is two, two key things really is uh, range. And then the other one is latency. So range, um, I've used this up to 100 meters outside. Um, the the manufacturer says it goes further than that, but that's as far as I was able to try it to, and it worked great. No dropout, no problems with the signal whatsoever. My office that I have here is actually about 20 meters from my house. It's at the end of my garden, and I've left the camera in the office here and wandered all around the house with the receiver and uh, uh, Atomos Shogun 7 monitor, and been able to view what the camera's doing without any problems, no breakup or anything. It's worked really well, really solid. Um, if I go to the front of the house and into the front garden, so the whole house is in between, then that's getting to the, the, the sort of limits of what it will do. And, and every now and again, there's a little bit of picture breakup. Um, for the cost of this device, that's really remarkable because these sorts of devices used to cost way, way more than what this does. Um, and I was really surprised at exactly how well it works. It's very robust, very reliable. It's well built. It's all uh, predominantly made out of metal um, and just generally seems to be well put together. So in terms of range and everything, I, I have no issues with it. With all the current stuff that's going on with lockdown and, rem and social distancing and having to work, you know, some distance from uh, the people that you're filming and things like that, having the ability to wirelessly link is going to be a really big useful thing for me. It means that I, uh, potentially I could have the camera in one room, I can set it up to, to, to film somebody sitting in a chair and I could operate the camera in that room, but the producer, PA assistant, whoever else, even the focus puller, they could be outside. They could be in a separate room and still be able to see the pictures. Now, one of the things, though, that does happen if the signal quality does drop, if it's not ideal, is that the receiver and the whole system has all sorts of things in it to make sure the picture doesn't break up. But that slows down the how quickly the image gets from the receiver 
from the transmitter to the receiver. And that's called latency. Now, all of these video links, they will have some latency. None of them, unless you go to the super expensive outside broadcast type links will have zero latency. You've got to take the signal from the camera. You've got to process it into something that can be transmitted. It's, it's compressed. You transmit it. It's got to be uncompressed and, and then output over the output connection. So there will always be a bit of a delay. So to have a look at how much delay we've got with this one, what I've done is I've connected my FX9 here to the Atomos Sumo back here. And this is the uh, direct output from the Sumo, uh, from the camera, and then this is the output from the Mars 400S. And if I move the camera, you can see how much delay there is. You can see that the images move at a very slightly different moment in time. But the difference isn't huge. And I've measured it, and typically I'm getting about a three frame delay when I have a reasonably strong signal which is perfectly acceptable. It's even possible to use it if you're using a you know, focus pulling on that, because actually your reaction times are slower than that. Um, so I find it actually to be perfectly usable. Now, at the very extremes of range, when your signal strength isn't so good, that's when you can start to see that latency increase a little bit. Now, to help you get around that, there, there are three different modes within the Mars 400S. Now, if I bring up the other camera, if we go to the transmitter, press and hold the menu button. And currently we're actually in uh, what's called speed mode. So if I go to the scene mode settings here, um, we have speed mode. So currently we're, we're in speed mode, which is designed that even when the signal is weak, the latency will be kept to the very minimum. But in this mode, when the signal is very weak, you'll start to see some loss of image quality. So the, the system aims to produce the lowest latency and will sacrifice some picture quality in order to achieve that. But if I change this now to image mode, so up here, and I, we select image mode, we now have always the priority is image quality. So when you get to the extremes of range and maybe the signal's not so good, the picture quality will remain very high, but you may get more lag, more latency, more delay in the system. Now, because we've got a good signal here, you probably yeah, there's maybe a little bit more delay than there was before, um, which you know, is, is kind of to be expected. But in between, the one that I tend to use the most, if I go into my scene modes here, is balance mode. So balance mode here, if we select balance mode, and balance mode tries to get the best balance between latency and image quality, even when you're at the, the extremes of the range of the system. And this is where I tend to end up using it. Um, I'm not gonna use this to record a live feed from the camera generally. I'm gonna record the what I'm shooting within the camera or on an onboard recorder. This is really designed for remote monitoring. But in the high quality mode, in, in the scene mode for highest quality, um, in the image mode, it will give you a very, very high quality image. And for a lot of productions, you could record that and that could be used for your edit or your grade later on. So a really powerful little device. The receiver is very smart. It, it um, scans for, for uh, clear channels. And once these are paired and they're supplied and pairing them just takes seconds, you just select pair in each device, connect them with a USB cable uh, to pair them. And once they're paired, um, the receiver will, if you change the channel here or the channel changes on the receiver, the receiver tells the transmitter to change channel for a clear channel with least interference. So it is really a nice little system. Just go down here to return, come out of that. There isn't much in the menus. There isn't much to change because they they just work. There's no resolution changes that the, 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 the transmitter detects what you feed it and then the receiver adjusts to match. So very, very simple, very quick to use. Now, one of the things um, that a question that, that has come up with these is noise, because they do have fans in them. Um, there's, a, the, I think the transmitter takes something like 10 watts of power, the receiver is about six watts, they don't draw huge amounts of power. Um, as I've got this configured here, what I'm actually doing is I'm powering the, um, the transmitter is coming off a DTAP, off a 
battery adapter here, so I'm running it off the camera battery. Um, SDI in, but you have HDMI in as well. Um, but on the back of the units, there is a standard uh, tray here for a BPU type battery. That's the standard um, low cost Sony type camcorder battery. Get them almost anywhere, cost next to nothing. You can run them on that. But there is just here, you can actually, this is a, a port here where the there is a fan that keeps these cool and the exit is on the top. So they're not completely silent. They do make some noise. Now, I don't know if, if I shut up for a second. I don't know if you can hear them. My experience is, so I've got my sender unit right here next to the microphone on the camera. If I'm shooting in a typical office environment where there's computers and other things whirring away, I don't tend to notice the noise from this. So in my office here, um, I have a, there's a little server running in the background and that that's making a whirring noise in the background. So in those sorts of environments, I don't tend to hear it. Um, if you were in a very, very quiet environment, I probably wouldn't mount this right next to the microphone because there is some noise. I mean, if you, if you have, hang on a minute. Yeah, I'm holding it right next to my microphone, so you are going to hear that. Um, so, yes, there is some noise. It's not a lot, though, but there is some noise. Um, if I'm using wireless mics, radio mics, if my sound guy's got a rifle mic, gun mic, shotgun mic, I'm not going to worry about this. The, the camera has a fan in it as well, and every now and again that fan will come on if the camera's getting hot. If you're using the XDCA back on this camera, that has a fan on it too. And this is one of the issues, all of this, these modern electronic devices, we want them ever smaller and smaller and smaller, but they still generate some heat and you still have to get rid of that heat. So there is some fan noise. And in fact, I've just heard the fan in the camera come on. You know, so obviously the fan in the camera is at least as noisy, if not actually possibly noisier than the fan in these units. So yes, it exists, makes a bit of noise, but it's not something that I'm concerned about. If if I want, if I were shooting one man band, um, just relying on the camera mic, I'd probably locate this to the back of the camera just to move it away a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, um, I didn't design them, I didn't make them. Of course, we would love to have them silent. But um, if I if I feel this now, it's warm, not hot. It's warm. Without the fan, it would probably get very very hot. So it's something that is necessary. So um, unless there are any further questions, I will end the, the stream here. Um, I can thoroughly recommend these. I think it's a really nicely well-made product. I think it ticks all the boxes for what you need for this type of product, which is it's well-constructed. Um, a nice little touch actually in the box with it. You, if in terms of mounting, if we look at the bottom, of this unit, you have your standard uh, quarter inch bush in the bottom here, but they also provide you with a 90 degree bracket so that if you want to mount it you know, flat on the top of your camera or standing up like this, you can do either. Obviously, in terms of getting the best range, when the antennas are in the clear like this, you're going to get the best range. If your antenna is buried under a whole load of other wiring and accessories, your range will be reduced. But they give you the different brackets in the kit so you can mount it either upright or lying flat. I've just got a little, um, it's actually a little small rig ball arm here. So what I can do when I'm um, between moving between lo locations, when I put it in the camera bag, it just um, just sits down there. I probably wouldn't operate it like this because it really is right under the mic then. But certainly for going from A to B, or if I'm using an off-board mic, the radio mic, I will very often just have this here. It's really sort of out of the way there. So really like it, really pleased with it. Looking forward to getting back to work and, and using it. I think it's going to be so useful with social distancing and everything like that. Now I've already got a remote follow focus kit so I can remotely focus the camera. If you're using something like the FX9 nowadays, you have amazing autofocus. So it means that I can step back from that interview situation, monitor everything that I'm doing, see what the shots are, uh, and be confident I'm getting what I need to get without having to be right on top of the rest of the crew or the actors or the talent. And it's going to be great once I get that iPad 
for producers, PAs, directors to also go off and, and monitor with. So great product, great value for money, highly recommended. Thank you for watching.